top tactics for generating new business today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. You've reached the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome everyone to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 280. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Um, you probably are listening to this as actual podcast audio, but if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode. Today, we're having another Ask 5 mashup from Season 2. This is question number two. Share your top tactics for generating new business. Great stuff um, from our crew, so let's get right to it. Your top tactic or idea for generating new business, meaning not from your people that you know. And I'm I'm wondering if this networking thing is oh. is powerful. I mean that 100%. that side benefit you just said is huge because my challenge with recommending, I mean that's real intentional, is you know, I'll recommend people that we work with and then somebody will have a bad experience because all of a sudden that person's service. So you do you worry? Wait, maybe we can answer that question, but what's the idea for new business that you would share? Yeah, with it, 100% people? networking, 100%. Okay. You know, when I came to Pittsburgh, um, uh, I, I tell the story in my book, but I, I didn't know anyone at all. And so I made a goal that I was going to have 51 to ones. Uh, we moved here in January of 2014. So we're coming up on 10 years. And I don't know a single person in Pittsburgh at all. And I'm going to be a realtor, right? So it's all relationship based. And I don't look like people or sound like people from Western Pennsylvania. So automatically, they kind of look at you sideways. Where are you from? Right. Um, and so I just went door knocking. I would knock on a thousand doors a month. Uh, which is hard to do in Pittsburgh when they're not all next to each other like they are in yeah. California. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh and then I also just would network like crazy. And and I built my business one one coffee at a time, you know? Uh, and it was never about me. It was always about, let me find everything I can find out about Matt. You know, he seems like a funny guy. He's got this great personality. Let me let me go have coffee with him. Just, you know, tell me about you. Where'd you grow up? Where, tell me about your spouse. How did you guys meet? You know, uh, and just tell me about your family and get to know them. And, uh, and so over that, I just built these relationships. And then when I can start connecting other people, then I'm seen as the kind of the helpful guy. And then yep. no one's offended or stressed out by me because I'm not constantly with my hand out. I'm just helping others. It's, you know, the, the problem is it's not sexy. It, it's a, you know, um, relationships are a crock pot, you know, not a microwave and mm -hmm. uh, good ones anyway. And uh, just kind of like a meal, right? A like crock pot meal is going to be way better than a microwave meal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's it's kind of the same way. But networking by far, and I just find that most most folks in real estate don't don't like to get out and do that. I I won't work in the office. I won't go to my office. Um, my office is the coffee house down the street, and, and everyone jokes. They're like, "Oh, you're in your office." I'm like, "Absolutely." You know, no one's ever walked into my real estate office asking if they could, you know, That's talk right. to a realtor to buy a house. Yeah, Love that's it. good. You know, not surprising that was your answer, Alex, for crying out loud. But I got to say, you know, you if you're listening, you really have to get it. You have to run out and get this book because I'm telling you the techniques that he gives you in this about networking, you know, the the how to actually have a conversation with someone that you never met, how to actually it, especially being someone that doesn't like to walk into a conversation. What's that method? The hangs the hangs method. Hangs method. Yeah, you yeah. don't need to go into that. Let them read it. But I'm telling you, you just described it practically when you were just going through that, right? right. It's, just, it's a way of actually making conversation. You know, when we connected the other day, I was looking back on this too. It's like now, you know, now every time I'm around Alex, I'm going to be, you know, second guessing everything. I'm like, did he do that with me when we were on the phone? Let me think about that because I think he kind of did. What the heck? You know, it's just, it's interesting, and, and so it's not just that technique. It's just the whole idea of being able to walk into a room when you were already feeling like you don't all you want to do is walk right back out of the room right but to make yourself get into these situations that would have been uncomfortable until you know how you can actually do it and i think that you, anybody no matter how great at networking you are can always learn a little bit more from somebody else's you know viewpoint and technique and that whole networking part of it well that's what the book's about network networking but i mean that the, the whole the the strategy behind how to actually connect with someone in your one-on-ones was amazing. So I think you have to create new circles. So pick up a new hobby, join a new club, make some friends, go make 
make some friends. And I have, an, I have a newer agent who has only been in California for the last three years. And when she came here, she got in the business. So she doesn't have a sphere of influence in California. All her family is, and friends is in another state. Mm -hmm. And so she's constantly joining clubs. And, and she asked me yesterday, how many, how many clubs should I belong to? And I said, there's no magic number. I said, you have a unique situation and that you need to build that sphere here in California. And, and she's done just a little bit of business. So she doesn't have a large, you know, past client, um, list, but create some new circles. So, you know, I'm trying to do that myself. Most of my friends are in the business. So if I want to grow my business, now if I want to grow my brokerage consulting business, I have the perfect audience. Exactly. But if I want to grow my buyer and seller business, I need to go make some new friends because all my friends are in the business. So creating some new circles expands your sphere, um, gives you the ability to meet more people who then know other people. So perfect. that's what I offer. I love that. I like That's great circle. advice. It's not hard. Just go do it. My marketing mind is coming up all sorts of ideas with circles now. There you are. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Something else to create. Hmm. There'll be a sticker about that pretty soon. So there you go. I'll, I'll send one to you. So I go directly to direct sources of business, which would be expired listings. Right. And that's just me, you know, as far as if you wanted, you know, if you want business today, then go talk to somebody that wants to buy or sell today. And so expired listings, I think, are a great way. But I, I put a little spin on it. I, I think that if an agent were to embrace their community and look at the opportunities within that community and you have your expired listings and for sale by owners that are out in that community, you get to have different conversations with them. You get to um, leverage open houses um, for those opportunities as well. Um, so I, I think as far as new business right out of the gates, now this would not necessarily be for a new agent. You know, expires definitely, you know, you have to build your skill set. Um, outside of that, I think that open houses are a great way to agree. Yep. get out there and knock some doors or at least drop some flyers off. I was always in the mindset of knocking doors, but if, no, if somebody's not going to knock a door, that, that's their decision. But at least you get to show yourself in the marketplace and start building some name recognition you know that people that come into open houses are possibly looking at doing something in real estate, whether they're trying to just investigate the price of their home and they, they live in the neighborhood or it's a buyer looking to buy a home. And so I think if you were to do that, I tell my agents, listen, that should be your business. That should be your office. Go do three to five open houses a week, right? And set up your office there. You're not doing anything and you know, you're not going to get any business sitting in the, in the Realty One Group offices. Go set up to where somebody can walk in. You can have a conversation and sharpen your skills. So I think open houses are still a tried and true way. There it is. You know, we are huge advocates of the open house. So uh, we could yeah. agree with you more on that. Well, and it, it probably is different in the mortgage. So, you know, my number one tactic is when I, you know, working a new transaction, I'm going to be exposed to a new agent on the other side of the transaction. Now, in my local market here, I do business in other states, but in the local market, I know a lot of the agents, but anytime there's an agent that I either haven't worked with them in a while, or I've never worked with them. And even if I have worked with them before, I always pick up the phone, I call, thank you, I received the contract, I'm going to introduce you to my, you know, to my team. I set a pre-commitment right at that time for how many times I'm going to touch them during the transaction. And I usually will tell them those uh, will come by email until we get closer to the end. They'll get a phone call from me, you know, towards the end. I set a pre-commitment for service, then I deliver it. And now it becomes memorable. And I also call the escrow officers because who do they know? They sit with realtors and work with realtors all day long. So I make best friends with them as well. And I always emphasize the team component because it's a new team that comes together on every transaction. It's a new team of people and I wanna bring all of them together. And then another thing that I do, and you know, this is important too, is you just gotta to talk to everyone. You, people need to know what you do for a living. This is a super easy one because we're out and about and if you're not a great at conversation starting, you know, wear your name tag. Uh, you know, if you have a branded shirt, not as much, but if you're wearing a name tag, it really says, I, this is what I do. I came from the office and hopefully if you're too not, you know, great at conversation, starting someone in line or in the elevator or at the store 
will see it and they'll approach you because everybody wants to know about what we yeah. do. People always have questions. There's such a high level of interest in, uh, you know, in real estate and in mortgage. So that is a great one, man. Freaking just like talk to people. Hello. Every educational session I went to, I was looking for that answer. That's what I was looking for. How do you generate business from people you don't know? And, and what I walked away with, one of the speakers talked about YouTube. And they all talked about all kinds of different things, TikTok and this and that. And then, but I think my big takeaway is I'm going to get really good on YouTube because he put some screenshots of some stuff on YouTube and there's like no competition there. And it's very effective and you just have to learn how to do it. And so there's a learning curve. But if you can learn how to do that, I mean, the definition of a business is an entity that thrives and prospers without you. Mm -hmm. That YouTube works when you're not working. You've got to find a way that's going to generate leads when you're not working, and YouTube is it. And that's that's my mission for J December, January, and February. By Valentine's Day, I want to have a YouTube um, channel out there that's generating landing page inquiries, and I I'm going to focus on one thing. Well, we've got to get back to face-to-face. -face. I know everybody would agree with that. Uh, I have revived my door knocking campaign and that's really changed a lot Wow! Oh. because now when I'm walking by and Matt's out there taking out the trash for trash day, uh, even if it's not my neighborhood, I can go, Hey Matt. And you're going, Oh, that's that lady again. You know, that's always <laughs> dropping us. Um, so face to face is reviving that door knocking is, is important, but where you door knock and, and saying that you're going to be an area responsible person you you want to have an area of responsibility i don't use the word the f word <laughs> which is farming mm -hmm. i don't like the word i think it's old school <laughs> um I, I just do i think you need to be a territory manager and you need to hone in on an area and take responsibility and then go share it with people but i love it, it it's also i mean so some people are not into the face-to-face -face, then create your series of messages that you are passionate about so or that you want to get a niche on uh to have people you're the go-to person for that it for that idea or whatever um create your series of messages so that you're not thinking you have to do it every day and then you're going to fail forward and not hold yourself accountable um i'll give you an idea everybody can have it take it it's like you know what i'm not hiding anything as a coach we give it all away right that's right so we currently now are building the series for Proposition 19 in the state of California. Most people don't know what Prop 19 has to offer. There are amazing opportunities for tax benefits, and there are a lot of questions behind it, behind them where a seller wouldn't know what to do if they were 55 or older. So I'm creating a series. Obviously, it's Prop 19, so I'm going to do 19, 30-second, 45-second snippets about it and put it on social media and create your youtube call a playlist prop 19 call your playlist whatever that little niche is post it on social media put Great your ideas. videos on instagram and TikTok, and you're done just pick one thing and create that series of messages whether it's five don't do less than five or whether it's 25 and create them now nice hey. You know, I love that what you're saying, you've got a theme here, which I resonate with big time and yep. Matt knows, and that is you keep saying this and I just want to reiterate it. You've got to find your thing and it, that thing has to be something you're passionate about. Sure. You know, I've had some success with uh, local service ads, LSA from, from Google, um, mm. kind of a pain getting set up through Google to do that. But um, basically you kind of sit at the top of the search results. Hey, I want a realtor in this area in Houston, you know, and then it'll come up with three agents that are set up through Google. Um, and then just, just like anytime a lead comes in, you just try to answer your phone as quick as you can and, and try to service them. Um, and the nice thing about that is you don't have to try to rank to be first. You don't have to pay a bunch of money for impressions. It's like, you're literally paying for, you know, the lead and, um, it works out about like 70, $75 per lead. Um, and the nice thing is if it's a spam, you can just, you know, protest it. And so if it actually is a client, you're, you know, paying for it. And, you know, if, uh, you know, I don't, I don't have, I don't get a ton, so I don't have a lot that work out, but 
you know, when they do $75 for, you know, a, a new client, that's, that's not too bad. So I definitely think that should be part of uh, an arsenal for somebody if they want to add a little extra business and have the time to, to make those calls. Great idea. And do you just set a budget with that? I forgot how it works. Do you set a budget to say, I only want to spend this much and they only charge you when you get a call? Correct. Yeah. And, and I've set my budget as not as high as you can, but I set it up pretty high, like 500 bucks a week. And I think I've only ever done okay like 150, you know? And so it's like, there's, there's not enough leads to really fill all that. So, uh, or at least in my area. Um, so yeah, I definitely, it's worth, we're trying out. Local service ads, which means you need to get Google reviews. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, which, are, which we've been working on for a long time. So I'm almost know, good. Almost All at right. fifty. All right. Good. Oh, good. That's beautiful. And to that point, everyone I know, I'm in an elevator. I talk to everybody in the elevator. So you want new business? Go talk to everyone everywhere, and don't sit home because sitting home will never give you any anything new. So when people ask me, they go, Dave, where did this, I refer, it's a family business. So when I get my clients, Angie and I, my daughter-in-law go out, right? And she says to me, where did this one come from? And I said, oh, I was at a wedding and just talking. So uh, an agent that doesn't want to talk about real estate is not an agent that's going to increase their business. So that it, me, I have given clients to other agents in the company from going to eat dinner and just getting people. So my advice, I mean, it's not my number one. Of course, you do video, you do everything to do it. But my advice is talk to everyone everywhere. Tell them who you are. Who do you know that doesn't want to talk about real estate? Yeah. Everyone wants to talk about real estate. Everyone wants to, is the prices going up or the interest rates? Everyone I know wants to talk about real estate. So I talk about it and my friends laugh at me because they said, Dave, who was that person you just spent five minutes in a restaurant? I go, I don't know. I don't know who they are. I met them. I started talking. So a, a little bit today of texting and, and not keeping that personal touch in is not the best thing in the world. I'll say to an agent, oh, you did a deal with this person. She's great. I love her. And they go, well, I don't know. I never spoke to her. And I yeah. said, what do you mean? And they said, oh, we did it all through text. And I'll say, that relationship will hurt you because if there's a house you want and it's that agent again, to have it listed, the relationship you have will get you that house. So my advice, as far as even generating business, go to those school functions. When Dave played football, every one of those football parents bought houses from, from me. So generating new business is getting out there, doing everything you possibly can. And I know all the that other stuff, it. you know, but that's yeah. the way I did it and still do it. I still get leads well, when I'm not looking for them. Honestly, that's probably some of the best advice because all these other things, people don't want to do video or don't know how to do it. Just get out, get out of your house and go talk to people. And, you know, one of the things I used to do years ago was say, hand out five business cards a day, meaning have five conversations every day with people that everywhere and you'll be surprised where the business comes from. So I agree with that a thousand percent. Well, that was another great mashup from season two. If you want more information about our guests, including information on Rick's book and Alex's book, go over to our show notes at WBNLpodcast.com. This was episode 280. Until next time, get up, get out, live the life you've dreamed, alike, connect, prosper, and be forever wandering, but not lost.